talk to you about today is the difference between the steam canner or the atmospheric steam canner or your regular run-of-the-mill water bath canner. So this is uh, the steam canner that I've recently gotten that I have yet to have made anything in it yet, but it's coming. And your regular water bath canner. Actually, this is not the water bath canner that I use on a regular basis. I just use a regular pot that I have because I purchased this one and I'm not too happy about the way it works just because first of all, it scratched my stove top. It has a couple of I noticed after the fact little metal pieces on the bottom. It's so much bigger than the element on my stove that it took forever to come to a boil when it, once it was full of jars and water. So this is not my, my favorite one. I actually just use a regular old pot. But I do want to talk to you about the difference between the two because the steam canner and the water bath canner are both made to process your high acid foods. So foods that are 4.6 um, or less. So that's your high acid foods. And when we talk about high acid foods, we're talking about gems, jellies, your, um, it could be your pickled beets, anything that you would pickle like green beans, fruits that you would put in jars, um, pizza sauces, or anything that is a high acid food, tomatoes, and all those different foods. So I just want to talk a little bit about the difference. So why a steam canner, why a bath water bath canner, the pros and cons of both, I guess. One of the advantages of having your steam canner is as you can see, the bottom part of the, the steam canner here, this bottom part here, you only need to add a very minimal quantity of water. So if you kind of think of, the, think of that a little bit, that means that this vessel is gonna to come to a boil a whole lot faster. So when you're looking at your water bath canner, you need to fill your canner up to at least one inch above your jars. And if you're processing for more than 30 minutes, you have to bring your the water even higher than that. What this means is that this, this pot is gonna take a lot longer to come to a complete boil. And then you start timing once this pot comes to a boil. When it comes to your steam canner, the timing starts when there's a little dial gauge in there, when it reaches 212 degrees. Comparing how many jars that you can fit in each canner, when looking at this conventional, your regular water bath canner, you can fit 15 half pint jars. With your regular steam canner, you can fit about 14. You can put pretty much the same amount. Looking at pints, you can fit about 12 pints in your water bath canner, whereas your steam canner will fit about nine. Fit nine quarts in this and seven in your steam canner. So that may factor in as well, whether you prefer to use your water bath or your steam, or you know what, you can still use both. You can, if you have a whole whack of jars that you need to process, well, you have these two different options. And it'd be interesting to see how many batches you get done with your steam canning when, when, with your one uh, water bath canning. So that may be something I'll try somewhere along the way is how long does one batch take here from start to finish and how long one batch here can take from start to finish, just to compare the two. But at the end of the day, you are using a lot less water in this, um, in your steam canner as in your water bath canner. For any high acid food that you're trying to process in your steam canner, if the processing time is more than 45 minutes, you can't use your steam canner. Because it's a small quantity of water that's in there, if you boil it for more than 45 minutes, it's, you, you run the risk of your canner running dry. I don't know that there's too, too many high acid foods that you would process for 45 minutes or more, but just to note that you cannot use it if, if you're processing for more than 45 minutes. And as well, a disadvantage as well is that if it, if it does run dry, you just can't add more water and continue on. So um, that's kind of a disadvantage. For your water bath canner, uh, you can, you know, you can use it for more than 45 minutes. And if you see that the, the water levels are going down, you can add more water as, as long as you add your boiling water and it's continuing to boil. That's not an issue with your water bath canner. As well, another thing that's important to know is that you're going to start your timing at different parts with your steam canner. When you look at the dial gauge on the top, it's divided by three zones. So you have zone one, two, and three, and each zone represents and altitude. As soon as you reach the green section that it corresponds with your altitude, then you can start your timing. I don't find it too complicated. It just took me a second to figure it out when looking in the manual. And when you look at the water bath canner, then uh, you the timing, it's a little bit simple. You look and if it's boiling, you start timing.
Your steam canner will run you somewhere around $80 and that was Canadian where this very inexpensive one that I bought at a hardware store was maybe $30, $35. But like I say, not my favorite one to water bath can with. If you like this channel, if you like the content that I'm putting out, don't be shy, hit that subscribe button at the bottom of your screen and stay tuned for more content that will be coming out soon.